Someone else? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. I'm born again. I'm the Jew. I'm a James. I think I need to pass my James. It's a long story. After yesterday, we studied about the passing father. All the way, I have those bees I decided to call my father. And when I called him, I told, when I called him, I told him, right on him, Daddy, you are a passive father. That was my fifth time telling him, as the day father would come and he about the purpose of the man. I felt deep in me, my father is far away from me. Yes, I'm working. One day I decided, I used to send money to them, every end of the month. I used to take money to them. But that money did not bring the classes. I began asking myself, what is the problem? Money is not some solving this. I, I chose every week to go home. It could not solve it. My dad is a pastor. When I was growing, my father had no time for us. He could come back home when we were slept. As we to Nauka, he had to go to school. He made things worse when he took us to boarding school. We were only closing to school one week. We were in high school, after high school, college, after college, university, 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 university. <laughs> the wound continually grew in me. Now it was beyond repair. Now, for my father to reach me, he used to go to very close man to me, who is my mentor. I can tell you how to talk to me in town. So why do you have to use I don't to use a man to reach me. I am your son. I do do that. Why is it that you don't find time for me? Niki Buddha, you have a it. When I tell you, come, Mpaka, in the Mali, I'm chukwa na mbeleka kwa hoteli, na mundiza kitu, instead of answering, ananyamaza. Yesterday, he called him, Daddy, I've forgiven you. He didn't need an answer. Unless I call, he don't call. Then I was, he came, he called him, what do you do? What do you do? You don't talk? You won't send money? He's a pastor. Am I, am I too hard? He can be a partner. He's not a pastor to me. He's my father. He is my father. I'm, I'm, I should not try to please him. Because when I please him, it's called I should be the real me. And the real me is that he means in my tell me. Three days in a month. Okay, you know, should I be like my father? He does not answer. When challenges come, he calls himself. You know things when I'm very bad. Because I, I will not be like my father. I've spoken my heart. I have forgiven you. It is up to you. You either choose to forgive me or not. Hello? Hello. Pastors, when you are father, find time with your children. I didn't love to be a pastor. I hate it. One day we were in a meeting in Kamambia, I will never be a pastor. Little by little, I, become, I began liking it. I am in it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. It began working for me. I am in it. I will not be like my father. I will speak to my boys. I, was, I, have, a, I have a son who is in class five. I will speak to him. I will speak to him. Can you Papa what any idea? I mean, the job of pornography when I was in college. The time I was doing my, my course in criminology, I was, there's a crime, and it was a pornography. I was what? Now, I had to go deep. Now, I had to go deep. 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 I had
We need to get deep in it. Hakuna kitu siku anajua. Then when I ask my father, he calls back. Sikumwambia nikamwambia, "Hii kitu unaficha ninajua." It is already in me. Don't hide it. Don't be too spiritual. Men, let's not be too spiritual. Don't be too spiritual. Kijiko hicho kijiko. Kila kitu kwa jina lake because what you hide your children knows. Kijana nilikuwa naacha chuma kutoka kwa nyumba na wifi kwa sababu iko on so you can not. Mimi siko anajua kama huyu mtu anaangalia YouTube. So yake anaangalia YouTube anaweza funga lakini anaangalia kwa history. So mimi nataka kujua what what happens to my lot to point catch up. Nikuja nikafunga nikamuze wewe hii time mama mbwa kwa nyumba. Nani alikuwa na wachezi mtu akanembea jirani kamuza jirani gani anajua password ya kwa hiyo anajua. Kwa hivyo anajua. Then I go to Bagheri ya shule. I found the materials inside the book, the book, the books. Kwa kama ndani imefichwa. Hey bwana, let's speak it out. God bless. Thank you for your service. On the first day we were challenged to call our guides. Who took the challenge? And you told him something. Amish, come and tell me. And tell us what you, what you did. For how long have you not done that? I am one. I think uh, now you know my name, Amish. I love the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. I will say it. I went back. But from 24th of December, now it's 11 months, exactly 11 months. And God has not taken me to the left, next, or next, or next, in about 15 weeks, levels up there. And God is on our side, and God loves you. And God loves you. My dad passed away in the year 2002, my biological father. And uh, with one of our uncles, we took us out. Told us, do this, do that, do this, do that, and he became our father. From uncle, he became our father. And every once so often, on my dad's uh, death anniversary, I keep on saying my essence, thank you for stepping in my father's shoes. But I've never had the courage or guts to call him and say, Dad, thank you. No, I'll always call him uncle. Uncle, uncle, uncle. When we came here the first day and we were told, we saw all those videos and I was one of those guys. And even I, I can write SMSs for you know those ones where it's species and then you start again. You know those long, long ones. And I write. And uh, once in a while it touches me when I wake up at uh, the morning to come to church and I write to him, I love you and God loves you. And thank you for everything. And that day I saw these videos and I said, you know what? Let me try as well. I called him and said, Dad, are you sleeping? It's 9 30. He says, No, no, no. I'm having a drink here with my friend. I said, All these years, about 15 years, I've never called you. But today I have a guest to say, Dad, I love you. And thank you so much for everything. And the tears rolling down. And he says, You know what, I'm I love you too. And God bless you. <laughs> that takes cuts, isn't it? Yes. Well, let's clap for him again. <laughs> Allow me to introduce to you a, a good friend of mine whose father has made a difference in his life because not all fathers are bad senior. and um, he's been a father to his biological children but he's also a father to about 10,000 children and I'd just like him to talk to us briefly about the experience of him and his dad take some money please come <laughs> How many of you have heard of bullying children's home? 
Yeah? Why don't we bully children so? This is the last answer of uh, Dr. Muli. Dr. Muli is one of those prophets that are not recognized at home. But he's been acknowledged all over the world. In fact, very soon, there's a movie that's coming to town called Muli. It has been shown in the US to how many people? Over half a million people have watched it in, 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 the, in the US. And this is a product of Dr. Moore. Take some, share with us. Um, praise God. I'm happy to be here. First of all, I'm really honored to be welcome. I apologize. Uh, I was to be here at the first uh, meeting and we had a plan, but God's plan is the best. I was not able to come because I've traveled a little bit. Um, and then it's a blessing. And to see all these wonderful men, the fathers that are here, even if you do not have a child yet, you're a father to be. Um, it's amazing. And to see the growth of men of purpose to me is a show and manifestation of God's blessings. And it's also something that shows me that it is from God, because God prospers what is from Him. Not because it is easy, but because of consistency and prayer. And I'd like to honor my friend George and all the people who are out here who are, are making this work. Um, it's very difficult to take a short time, but what, what I'd like to really speak about um, is a story of faith and, and obedience. And I'll do my best to, be, to take it short. My, 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 my father was born um, in the 40s, and at the age of six, he was abandoned by his parents. They woke up and they left, and they left him to fend for himself. Now, to put it in perspective, uh, this is the early 50s, whereby you're under colonization, and of course, there's poverty. He did not have a house, he did not have anything. My grandfather, uh, his mother died when he was being born. So even he did not have a parent. And so it had been a generational thing because his own father was an alcoholic, he was an alcoholic, and everyone basically were alcoholics, and they left him. And, and what happened for 10 years, he would move from place to place, begging, borrowing, uh, no shoes, no food. And, and life was not easy. At the age of 16, he tried to commit suicide. And as he was sitting under the tree, about to commit suicide, Someone came. Him, he says it was like an angel because this young man came and told him, What are you trying to do? And he explained to him all these issues. He told him, There is a certain meeting I'd like you to come. He did not explain what for. And when he came to the meeting, it was a youth band. The preacher was teaching about forgiveness. And what my father had planned is to grow up and beat up his dad and make me beat him to death. Eh? Because he used to beat them, he used to beat my grandmother, he used to. You know, there's, there's a rumor that goes on, there's a sister of theirs that died, so it's always said that Kufa, but people are not sure, and Kufa, and people are Kufa. So it was that serious. You know, you get to a certain point and you're the first concern. You're like, this man, when I grow up, eh, it's a monish, because you're powerless. And, uh, and that scar, that unforgivingness was really in him. And, and basically, when he gave his life to Christ, he, he learned about forgiveness. And when he forgave his father without seeing him for 10 years, he decided to go um, and look for a job. He tried the army, he could not do it, and then he walked three days to Nairobi, three and a half days actually. And he was hungry. For those three and a half days, he did not eat it. The first door he banged on, he asked for work. And the work that he was given was to be a gardener. And he was being paid by leftover. So when they eat the food, when I'm back in Kwasahan, he made him a book for over a year. Then after that, he was so hard working, he applied to, to do a correspondence program uh, for accounting, and the lady of the house was an Indian, was like, you're so hard working. So he was given a job. It was so lucky that those families, the, the managing director of Kampuzi was actually the person who was the husband of that lady. And he went to work as a, as, as a clerk, and he became an assistant manager with time, and then he bought his taxi. And anyway, as life went on, he started a business, he was very entrepreneurial. Uh, the matatus gave birth to buses, the buses gave birth to insurance, the insurance to the security company, to oil, to gas, to oil, to the estate. And, and basically, by the age of 30, he became a multimillionaire in the 70s. And by God's grace, he got the entire, the, the, the only, he was a distributor of total oil and gas in Kenya. 
from that background. And, and he had another 10 years of a lot of success. But in the year 1986, in Nairobi, his car was stolen. And when it was stolen by street children, he had to go home by bus. They had not taken a bus for such a long time. And he kept on seeing faces of children in his himself. And for three years he refused to obey God's voice. God was telling him, you need to do something. You were like this, he used to pray to me, saying, you need help. Now you, you feel you're there. And that was happening with, I give my time, I've built a church, I do men's ministry, I do my thing, but then God was saying, you need to, to stop what you're doing. And one day in 1989, he came home and said he'll never work again, and he sold everything. And by everything, I mean everything. He sold everything he owned. And he gave everything to the poor. And he turned the home to our children's home. He took the farm, we started farming for them. He built a school. And in seven years, we were very broke. And we were just from church. Because we were bringing prostitutes to church. In the 90s, it was not cool to have children's homes. Because he used to go and bring drug dealers to church. And when we were kicked out of, 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 of church, that was the best thing that ever happened. Because it started a spiritual journey to trust in God for providers. The story is very long. But then the point is this. The turning point for him was forgiveness. Forgiving his father without even seeing it. And the minute he did that, things changed. Yes, he walked for three days. So it's not that it changed immediately. But how they changed, God opened up his, he opened up. And fast forward, his father became so arrogant and, and he kept on beating my grandmother and all these things that the community, you know, back in the day, they called him and were coming from here in my tribe, the tribe could say in Niwe, buying a number to check and all those things back then they were very strong. And they almost killed him. And then my dad had to pay for him to be released. And one of the greatest things is when you take a burden of a father at times, it is maybe up to you to father them. So the greatest thing that I can talk about is forgiveness. If you've been offended by your parent, learn to forgive. Because until you let go, you'll never go. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. I hate you so much, so you hate is in you, and your man is going to die with pain and sorrow. Let us learn to forgive because our fathers, all of them, even them, have a journey that they have gone through that has made them who they are. It's not an excuse, but let us forgive. And so, thank you. His dad has uh, done so much for, especially his two children. I think, if I'm not wrong, the last time I read, about 10,000 of them have gone to university now, isn't it? And uh, I think they have a big, big farm in Matu, where they are taking care of all the, they have schools and farms and kids, that's just amazing. In fact, was it last year when he was nominated for the Nobel Prize? Yeah? I mean, it is up to that level. That should be it. One of these days, shall bring him to men of Bambas and he shares his story with us. Amen? Amen. You cannot, you, you can be a father, even of the fatherless. Are you together? And that's what I really wanted to ask to learn from you. Just before we hear the word, I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Homer, please. Dr. Homer is, um... come, come. <laughs> Let me acknowledge Dr. Homer because. Uh, and you can understand why I'm a father. Because if it were not for this man, I would not have children. Dr. Homer is a gainer. He has delivered all my children. <laughs> and uh, I know he has a passion for, especially the boy child and all that. Let's give a challenge to this man. God is good. All the time. The society stands on the shoulders of men. Right? The one thing that struck me uh, very hard about the men's ministry is um, when God was dealing with Adam and Eve and they were disobeying, you realize that uh, in Genesis 3, uh, 
when in Genesis 2, when God created the man, the woman was not there, right? The man was created first, and he was the one who was given the instruction, the moral instruction of what he should do and what he should not do. Then the woman was created later, isn't it? But in Genesis 3, when they were going in to see, Adam, when you read that verse again, Adam was there when Eve was being received. So who is the problem? Uh, all along, we have been told Eve is the one who led the human uh, uh, race astray, isn't it? But then you go and you read that verse again and you realize that Adam did not do what he was supposed to do. It is the failure of Adam to tell Eve what God had said and insist on doing the right thing that brought the fall of man. And it is therefore our business to reclaim manhood, to claim our position, our relationship with God, and then impress this on our families. And that for me was a turning point. Thank you. Um, I'd like us to watch a short clip. And um, this clip basically is about the responsibilities or lack thereof of men. And I hope it's going to minister to you uh, in, in the next few seconds. Some of you who have been there uh, in our class, they are the alumni, I know you've watched this, but it doesn't have to watch it one more time. Just how the impact of fatherlessness is in the US and also back here. Just listen to this. Today, so for you, okay. I'll start. You start from the beginning. Boy, start from the beginning. So I want you to repeat and complete this for me. Okay. Today, today, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I am struggling. Between boyhood and men. Between boyhood and men. And that makes me feel. I mean, at, at times helpless. Okay, and that makes me feel helpless. Okay, <laughs> take a breath. Do I need to come closer to you? <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Really, you, you are in it. Come on. Really. I want you to get behind me. I want you to get behind me. Turn around. Turn around. I want you to back him up. I want him to know that you got his back. So, sure. yeah. mm -hmm. Because see, a mother can nurture you and nourish you, but you got to have your eye on another man to know how to do this. I just want to speak into your heart. Yeah, I'm a father of twenty-eight children. Repeat that. Father of 28 children. And I wake up every day. And I wake up every day. And I feel. And I feel. You can do this. All your emptiness, brother. You wake up every morning and you feel empty. When I think about my 11 children, repeat that. When I think about my 11 children, I feel helpless. I'm full of shame and guilt. I'm bitter. You know, Let I'm me talk to you as a, as a woman, as a single woman. I gave you the most intimate part of who I am as a woman. I opened my soul to you when I allowed you to lay with me. And I trusted you. I trusted that you would be here. I trusted that you were the promise that my daddy never gave me. I trusted you with my soul, with my, with my body, with my being. I trusted you. And you left me. And not only did you leave me, but you left me here with this child. Just like you don't know who you are, I don't know who I am. And now I've got a child. And I've got to figure it out. And you, you tell me that you get to go on and figure it out and have other women. And I'm here with your child. I don't get to go figure it out. 
call them, you know, even the ones that were the relationship. You were my promise. I opened myself to you. I gave you all of who I am. And you get to go on and find yourself with other women. And I'm left here with your job. What do you say to her? Say it to me. Two words. Two words. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. What am I forgiving you for? Forgive me for not being the, your promise. Yeah, oh. Uh, Thank you. Um, we need to play that clip again suddenly in the middle. But she look for an opportunity to play it again. But basically, this man had father 28 children with 16 women. And so he was just being taken the, 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 the whole size cycle of it. But we, we shall have it from the beginning, and I just wanted us to see the impact of bringing up children. That are not that are not father. Amen. Good. Now we want to enter into the session of hearing the word for today. Are you ready? Ask your neighbor. Are you ready to listen from God? And tell him I'm glad you came. You won't be disappointed. Amen. You. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We shall do this later. We shall do this later. Okay, I, I, I'll tell you. Let's listen to the word of God. Very good. Uh, before we just share the word, I think it's important to recognize the, the men of God and the pastors that are in the house. We are honored to have you here. If you're here, you're a pastor. Or a bishop or an apostle, all right. Please stand up on the feet. We want to acknowledge you, all the pastors in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, Pastor Tony, why don't you come and uh, also welcome us again? I know you've done it before. Then uh, I shall have the pleasure of introducing the speaker for today. And could I to you? There are people who have come here today for the first time. Today is your first time. You've not been here for the last two days. Let me see by show of hand. Just stand up on your feet. We want to welcome you. Okay. Oh, great. 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 Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The guys next to them, why don't you give them a hand and uh, let them feel, you know, at home. Karibon, Karibon, Sam. I tell them you missed two good days. Thank you so much. First, just a few remarks of welcome. And then we shall. Praise the Lord. Buona Spirit. I want to say, first of all, George, thank you. Thank you for having this vision and running with it. As you've heard, my name is Tony Kema, and I'm the lead pastor here at the of God, who served with my wife, Reverend Carol. And I don't have a loan. I have men who hold me accountable, born as spirit. And uh, I'd like to ask the deacons who are here from the of God to just thank you so that we can also appreciate you. I don't have a loan, I have men. The Sabi, uh, Edwin Mutinda, who's also a faculty here. Uh, if you James, there was one more. Um, maybe he stepped out, but we bless the Lord. And uh, the men's chair uh, is not here right now. He's still at work, he's on his way here. And I bless the Lord. Bonas Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I don't know if the other men of the. Uh, 
in your bed. Men means to be there. I've seen Steve. Yeah, there is one, Steve Boero. Anybody else? Maniasi? I think they're still on the way. Let's not thank you, Steve. I want you to ask the man next to you, are you part of a problem or part of a solution? Are you part of a problem or part of a solution? Now, ask them like they owe you money. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them like they owe you. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution? You know, I saw the other day that somebody owes you 2,000 naira as you must see. Safari for most 30 B and they're still open. That's boldness. <laughs> I want to say this. I'm, I'm asking that question because in the book of Judges chapter 2, the Bible says this. Joshua the son of Nan. The servant of the Lord died at the age of 110. 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance, in Timna, Eres. Basically, say he was buried in honor in the tombs of his great grandfather. In the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gar. <coughs> Verse ten. After the whole generation had, had after the whole generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation grew up who knew nothing the Lord, who knew neither the Lord nor what the Lord God of Israel had done. Imagine everything Joshua saw: the parting of the sea, food coming from heaven. Those are major details. And they forgot to tell those things to their sons. My sons are here today. Where is TJ and Tori? I saw Tori here. They are somewhere. Because I, I think I've just seen one of them. They, they have been distracted by the things of this one, Palapa Child. <laughs> but I want to say this. When I, every time I read this story, I tell my children the truth. And I'll share with you a testimony. This will not be said of my children. Some of you share testimonies of what the Lord has done with other people, but never with your children. It's not that the Lord is not doing it. Is that true? The Lord comes through for you, gives you money, the bank gives you stuff, but we never share those testimonies. With our children, we share them with our friends. Is that true? When I was in school, I wasn't very serious. Not because I didn't read, just that what I read in the prep didn't come to the exam. And I remember I told my kids, they, my kids came home. And they presented their documents. And uh, um, my wife was, <laughs> everything my wife read came in the exam. So her story is like 50 people. <laughs> and I told them the truth. I told them school was really, really hard for me. And school, there are people whose school is easy for, and there are people whose school is really, really hard. One as so for me, I'm one of those guys whose school was hard. And I shared with them, I told them the truth. And uh, I told them what my challenges were. And uh, it's interesting because when you share the challenge, you, you have no control of what happened. <laughs> so my kids are making fun of me. <laughs> so I had to threaten them with their life. <laughs> Several. So I'm saying, even when you open up, notice you have no control of what you have. Say that. But that has helped me with them when you're talking about school. Because I'm not loading it on them. I'm saying, let's work with you together. I pray that we will not lose our generation. I've been a youth pastor for 16 years, and I can tell you, all is not ready. 
All is not ready. Half of this generation, if the Lord doesn't come, is going to hell. And unfortunately, I'm talking about children who fathers are in the main service. God has to So for me, I led one of the biggest youth ministries in our country and beyond for over 10 years. And I can tell you for sure, all is not ready. The primary source of information for your children should not be school or the internet. It should be the father or the mother. You should be the primary source of information. Unfortunately, we are telling everybody else. So I pray that this generation that will come after you will know everything that God did through you or in your life. Because we have, made, we have testimonies, don't we? Before you share your testimony with people in church, and with people on the WhatsApp group, share those testimonies with your children first, so that they will know your God and what God has. And I was impressed by this young man. He shared his testimony, the testimony of his dad. When my dad died, I couldn't try to see all I had to ask his brother and his friends, because I had no idea who this man is. This young man was, I was envying him, saying things about his dad. Like he's, you know, like he was there. One as you. May God help us. And thank you for coming. Feel welcome, a river of God. And we bless the Lord for you. Thank you, George. Amen. It's wonderful to have you, your pastor who believes in you and who supports your ministry. Thank you so much. So why don't you stand up and uh, stretch because we're going to be seated for the next about 45 minutes or so. And there are new faces that have come, you guys who are coming and started. So why don't you once again look at the guy who did look at the previous, someone else, yeah? And tell him you are there. You may be seated, you may be seated. So tonight, I assure you, you are in for a, a treat. We have a speaker who God has raised for such a time as this. He comes all the way from Uganda. His name is Joseph Nabimanya. Joseph Nabimanya is in the corporate world, but he loves the Lord. He's a HR director at Zipri. Zipri is uh, those commercial related insurance institutions. He heads the whole region of East and Central Africa, and as far as HR is concerned. But he's a blessed man. I've worked with this man, and one thing I can single out about him, he loves prayer. Amen? He loves God, he loves prayer. And he loves the Lord. So be prepared if you have a pen. The scriptures will be just flowing. Yeah? So be, be, be prepared because he gives the Lord. He's blessed with uh, three, three daughters and one son. <laughs> three daughters and one son. And they are all very, very blessed. How many of you would like to have all the children when CPE results are out? They are always in the district. Would like to have that? That is his testimony. All of them. The first one is in campus now, taking a master's degree. To the last one, he's doing class eight, class six, seven now. Every exam they have done, they are always in the newspaper. Is he that being blessed? Yeah. That's the kind of a man he is. Put your hands together for Joseph and Mariana.
Christianity, in the work of salvation, is respect for authority. And the scriptures begin because respect for authority is in Romans chapter 13. The Lord in Romans chapter 13, the word says, For there is no authority that has been established except that that has been established by God. Therefore, you must honor those in authority because you do not do that. It means you have not honored that which the Lord has instituted. Mr. Tony has pastored me for a number of years now, for I am not a citizen of this country, I'm a resident for, for a purpose of work. But when I'm in Uganda, I'm now again pastor. I start with under another pastor called Dr. Joseph Sewanda of Victory Mission Center, who certainly has brought me to where I am in the journey of Christianity because it has been a long journey. But it has been a journey of amazing things, which I believe we shall share. And throughout those areas of the father factor. And my session is actually the power of the praying father, isn't it? So I also read the book of your dad, Father of the Fatherless. Because when I listened to him when he ministered at MOP, I went and I bought the book. I actually downloaded it on Amazon and then it was shipped to me. Yeah. So I read it and was humble. It's very few people that can do that. So yes, thank you very much for honoring also the time to come and be part of this, what George has uh, put together. Let us first pray before I listen to you the scripture that the Lord has put on my heart. As a foundation scripture, before then we go into the many that follow and bring together to crystallize to you the power of the praying Father. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, O oh, you, Lord God of Israel, receive the glory. Before you assembled a men of purpose, they want to know you deeper. They want to live your values deeper. They want to dig deeper because only in you do we live and find our being. Tonight, Lord God, we appear to share your word in its truth. For when praying for your people, O Lord Jesus, you say in John chapter 17, verse 17, that your word is truth. The truth will be spoken today, and may the truth bless a man to another level, a level that will be forever transforming into their lives. Because when you found me, I was least in my family. You have moved me to the tops and showed me that it all depends on you. Will you kindly come and favor us with that presence, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Open with me your the Bible, your Bibles, or if maybe you can also project uh, for, for whoever. Because I personally do not speak theories. No. I spoke theories up to a certain level until the Lord ministered to me to speak testimonies about myself because the man in me is not a theoretical presence. The man in me is a practical presence. I don't speak theories. I speak it as it is. So you take it, or you read it, but it will be the truth. So I do speak what I've seen. That's it. I don't, and, and I'm not a frail guy. Somebody who wants to play well and and and, uh, and be politically correct. No, if for me, 
you have a dot on your shirt without any. And this shirt looks like you didn't wash it well. Yeah. There are guys you know who you have have you struggled to speak to people with bad breath? Has it occurred to you that you speak if you are together with a guy and, and you like to see you are struggling? <laughs> yeah, it happens, isn't it? And you actually ask yourself, how do I confront really? And then a guy crossed me and the other problem. No, me. Me, we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if I happen here, yeah, I hope I won't get it. It happened actually here in the young man church. Here again. Maybe you are here, but, but I told you. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and, uh, and so he sat and told me his best I said, hey, 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 how do you crush me with this? <laughs> I told him. But he must be a delivered guy if he's here, I don't mind. Because I said, you know bad breath is the problem of not cleaning your mouth properly. The doctors probably would have better things and they dentist me and they are the kind of guy. But you see, I told you. You, you have to brush, and you have also go to the tongue because the tongue has the same tendencies. And I think that he did it because later on he did not smell that way. So anyway, the Lord has given me that. It is not, it's not easy. It's not easy, but the Lord, the Lord has to give you strength, isn't it? So it's not theory that I speak. It's facts. It's facts, and that's it. That I am. Uh, at this age, I don't have to fear anything. Jonah, are you able to predict on why do I just read? The book of Jonah, chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tashish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a sheep bound for that port. After paying the fare, you can see he also had the fare to pay. He went aboard and sailed for Tashish. To flee from the Lord. Do you see the intentions? Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the sheep threatened to break up. Verse 5. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea. Lighten the sheep. Bah, Jonah had gone below deck where he lay and fell into deep sleep. Verses. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up, call on your boat. Maybe he will take notice of us. So that. This was revealed to me when you spoke to me about speaking to men. And I have been praying, praying and fathoming scriptures that come in relation to this. One, two, I want to present to you that Jonas left while others were here. Jonah was sleeping when he had when he is the guy who had the father or the God that could save the others from trouble. Jonah slept. I felt that others called gods that I called before I found Christ. It is not possible for you to pray a God other than 
our Lord Jesus and the expect results. If you get those results, they will be in another realm, and that realm will pass away. The only prayer you will pray and be and be sustained in hand is the one that is in John chapter 14, verse 6. You know what? You read, you need to write the scriptures because me, I will speak scripture. You remember he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no any other religion, there is no any other code, there is no any other denomination that has made the claim of taking people to the king as Jesus did. Never. Anyhow, so Jonah sleeps. I said to him that on that ship, on that whatever, there were people calling on other gods. I fed no Muslims. And I have done studies on how they pray in the Quran. The Muslims call Yona, Jonah, they call him Yunus. The Muslims must have called Yunus, and, and they also have that in the Quran, by the way, the story of, of Yunus. I have, I, have, I have battled this Christianity movement to the extent of being at, at risk. Because Muslims believe in fighting you physically rather than their God fighting for them. Because they asked, we engaged the Muslims and asked them, how would you use, because you see, you remember how when you go on, Jonah now prayed from inside the fish. Yeah? You remember the fish, then the, 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 the swallowing, and then the brain. Yeah? In chapter two. You remember the, the Muslims, I don't know whether you know, but maybe some of you are or have been. The Muslims have the belief that you, your prayer cannot be answered unless you are facing the car. And that is where, you know where they go to for people. There is that uh, image where you must face who you are praying to. That is why when you, when you are dealing with the Muslim, if he or she is going to pray, he must look for the coordinates. Are you there? And uh, I mean, I mean, we have hired. We have, we have, uh, we have them in, in, in our office. We have two. Anyway, so so they have to go to look for the coordinates where now they must face the car. And I asked them, how did the humans find the car park inside the fish? <laughs> you have laws. You are under a fish, and you are very big. Will you find the coordinates? <laughs> the Lord, we ask them, we say, how is it that they are that means if you are about to go into, go into a car accident and the car is heading to Nakuru and the car is, is, is in Nairobi, you must say, Allah, and you done to Nairobi, real? Or what to be are you? Excuse me. So I think, me, my, me I believe. They called, and they must have called on that ship and said, ah, and nothing happened. So, the ship got lost because they are calling for a wrong God. The person, unfortunately, who had the right to go was That's me. It has me. That men in the church has it. And I moved into this life of Christianity as a sleeper until I became a father. And when I became a father, it dawned on me that dying stops at courtship. When you tie this thing, it comes around. And that language, <laughs> language you, you will, I, I don't know whether you have tested it, I have. Yeah. You know, you know, Boniface told us men want to lie, and they lie. They don't want to tell the truth. Me, I will tell you there are things that challenge me. In fact, they challenge me from your, from your chat, from your, 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 your message. 
There are some things like, like because me always see a guy feeling my son, I love you, sir. <laughs> 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 I said, you are coming, your flight is here, da, 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 da. the tickets are ready, I want you to be here, you will be here at 10 o'clock, da, 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 da. I am with my body face. And I said, I tell you my happy. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. So I, 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 I was about to say that, I said, I'm always coming. <laughs> Because, because I have I have dealt with these children now as it is plenty. I don't play games. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyhow, so so yeah, so so I went into this, this marriage and the Lord and we moved on. And it was good. And it was good. And then we had this one, the first, this first born, Mary. That was good. And then we had the second born, Esther. That was good. And then also they dealing with me deeper in his, in his things. You see, when you come closer to God, he comes closer to you. And this God is amazing. So, we decided we will stop at the second child. Because the economics were not working. <laughs> oh yes, it wasn't. It was, it, was, uh, it was a bit hard. So we had now, we were four of us, and you know, I was this hot in Christianity. I was, you know, when you are safe, I don't know about you. Me, when I was saved, I was so what? Like, you know, I became so spiritually minded until I was about to be of no other use. <laughs> and everything was spiritually interpreted. That's true. That's the truth. I don't try myself. I don't want this place. So, everything was, I had the big Bible with me. And every time it is prayer and fasting, it is true. Now, my wife, ah, but we need this anyway. So now, my wife started detecting some things I wasn't seeing. Because me, I was spirit. I am a spirit people. I, I don't know whether you need this introduction. Yes, sir. I think they are enough, but I enjoy them like my young. As they have told you, I am man married with four children, as they have told you. I am spirit filled, tongue talkings, demon chasing, and demon desiring. You know. They manifest in a terrible ways, and I have chased them myself. <laughs> anyway, so these were four, and we were there. My wife was detecting that if this guy is not ready at all, we could, we could die in poverty. <laughs> yes. And that's why we need these women who are who can see the other sense that we don't see. So anyway, so anyway, we moved on. We moved and so the economy was not adding up. But I was full of the Lord and so very good. The Lord gives you that anointing. Ah! School fees started coming. So we went and paid for me. Ah! And I was praying to God that uh, hopefully by the time Esther goes into school, we will be better. So let me start. And, uh, and, and hopefully the Lord will come soon. And can I tell you, I was not missing any faith lack on it. No way I need to come. To me, every evening fellowship. I come from work. I was um, 
I, I, I was a, a, a personnel assistant. You remember, you remember HRV, it used to have personnel, you know, there are those types. So, and, and then I went in and I was calling FIFA. And FIFA came and FIFA was coming, but it was not already translated to Shiz and Sex. <laughs> and you know, I could not cheat anything because the Lord had put on to me a, 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 a holiness, you know, an aura. So we paid for our nursery, for the nursery for Mary, and, and as Mary was born, was moving into middle and second, I mean, top class. Then, then, then my wife said, Oh, you know, now Esther also has to go. Yes, now we were staying in a place called Old Kampara. And we were staying with Muslims. There is something God connected me to Muslims. I don't know why. <laughs> Muslims were all in that apartment. Uh, Yes, so, and so they were occupying the bigger part and we were occupying the smaller part. Because we were not, we were not there, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> then, then now, we did a... Uh, then I started praying. You know, every scripture I wanted it to live, to be alive. So I started chasing away those Muslims. Because I thought my Lord must, must take the boy. Because they were demanding the rent on the dots. <laughs> and I tell you, they came on the dots even when I prayed, even when I fasted. <laughs> so, so you must, there are some things which you have to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So, anyway, so these Muslims. They were on our neck. Why? Because somewhere in the night they will be at this bell. This guy. So they started there. They started, they started wanting to chase us away. So they increased, they, they knew how to hit me because they knew where I was so, so, so they increased the rent. My God! So they, <laughs> so they increase the rent and okay. So, so I, I asked the guy in the middle of the road, he said, if she had gotten a job in Uganda, then the guy was paying well. So I said, okay, so you can't be scared, they are making fast. That is the way I started knowing the realities. Yeah, you know my mother, you know my father, <laughs> yeah, you know my sister, you know so hard to be that way. Ah, okay. So, so this is what I mean. <laughs> ah, okay. The things were not making up. So I started learning how to pray because it was affecting me directly. Prayer that I have learned is not because you know prayer is not a Google search. No. You will not that's why I'm not doing science. You don't do Google search with prayer. No how. The, the way we pray is to pray. That's it. That's it. So I started praying. Those Muslims actually did what they wanted to poison Esther. Yes, they put something in her drink. And Esther was a girl. She said, Oh, please, please have this drink. That Esther is my second daughter. She's now in, in the UK doing a little in space in Julia. Every child of mine has done four breaks only. Because I wake up and hold their heads. And declare James chapter 1 verse 5. Because you say, whoever lacks wisdom, we should ask it from God who gives generously without finding fault. <laughs> now, bring it. <laughs> Don't pray, James. God has given you scripture to, to, to win. Oh, yes. So I, I just, for me, wisdom is a matter of urgency. And when I pray, I go. I go into have different altars of prayer. 
when I go, one of the prayers I do is that wisdom daily. The wisdom which is first of all pure in series 17 of the book of, of James. That wisdom that you will need it as a man. Anyway, so wisdom. So Esther is now in, in, in the UK. Esther was being given what? Praise. The power of the great father. It is not possible that when she was about to take it, it is when I came out. It can't be. It must be that because the Lord saw and did not consider it worth for my child to be poisoned. I stepped out when Esther was holding that cup to drink. And I said, uh, Esther, what are you going to drink? Uh, then she said, oh, that the devil. The lady who had given her that thing ran away. And when she ran away, the thing fell down as well. And we saw poison. And I knew, okay, this is now time to leave this place. Because today it has been graciously given. Who knows more? But I prayed because in Romans chapter 12, it says, Bless and do not curse. Rather, if your enemy gives you, if to pretend badness, forgive him. And leave God to do the what? The vengeance. What happened? I prayed and went into Romans 12. That time I was, unfortunately, at that time I was praying a hard prayer. Because I had not yet grown to the level where you need to bless and not to curse. So we are here. I hit them. I said, You told me, Lord. I didn't know how that, that dynamite I have. I didn't know. I did it to give it to pass. Lord, you told me that I forgive them and you will deal with them. Now deal with them if ever be so severe. I knew it. I them. Oh, so, yes. And the lady, we came back from work and she was not breathing. That woman. They say they have rushed out to speak to me. Oh, I said, are you okay? I said, you know, the Lord says you visit them. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to them. I took my wife. Frankly speaking, I was, I don't know when I was wishing them to be one. I don't know. Now I can't even recall. But what I know is I wanted to see. <laughs> and I was there and I saw. And I saw her. And the Lord puts it in such a way that the people will see. And, she, and in that week, week, in her week, hours, she looked at me. And I had carried propaganda like my daughter, I'm happy that too. And I carried some of my I said, You can't. The people who are looking after her. Who is going to buy them? Ah, two days after. God we serve fights our wars. But what they don't know is what they talked about as a family. Because then they came to me and told me, you know, the Muslim Supreme Council wants to possess this place. Do you mind? Because now we are paying the rent. Do you mind if you found some? Now they were fearing to chase because they didn't know what to do. Do you mind? Do you mind? And I said, okay. I talked to my brother. There's a brother, man. The one who came to Paris. <laughs> so, praise you, man. No, my brother. So, I asked the engineer, she said, my friend, you know these people are. Actually, asking us to move because the story. Anyway, he was living in the Bukolobi flats, flat, flat for dinner, a block for dinner, C1. 
and he had built the house. He had built the house himself. So they were going there as a family, and the long story short, we moved into that place now. And when we moved into that place, we, oh, it was a better place. The environment was better, and yeah, we started the way back. The rate was also higher. So it's been okay. I, I, and, and I felt good at that stage, and then I said, okay, maybe the Lord is put me, and the Lord put me to another standard, and, and give me higher pressures. But then the way we, we became, the men were happy, the star was happy. They were happy. Me, I was in what they lot. I don't know whether you men get through this. I don't know. I do myself. So anyhow, we became we became happier and they were happy and what? And that spirit, that, 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 those flats now, they were managed by the National Housing and Constructors Corporation. Then they work with lawyers. They are the lawyers are the ones who collect the rent and everything. And so for, for them, it's not these guys who are coming with the tapas. No, this, this one, these are letters of demand. That's it. If they don't want to see you. So you pay that account and all that. So we had the fourth of the first part. <laughs> <laughs> the bed, the first day, the Lord taught me higher prayer. Because I found something, that some, some letter of the man, which they pass. They don't even want to see, they just pass it down like that. <laughs> so, so uh, I, 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 I fixed it <laughs> before, before, because I, you know, I would enter with the, with, uh, with Thanksgiving, you know, it's going on like that. Like, and how, how, how have you been? Maybe how have you been? Da, 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 da. So, so. A whole day they write a whole page in one sentence. <laughs> Punctuated by only commas, colon, you have seen it. Where is it, Nani? Where is it? Only one, no papa. Very good. I think you better, you better drop the thing for me one day. And, and so I read it and said, okay. So I went and talked to my wife. The power of the praying father. So I went and talked to my wife. I said, well, you know, he's a demand, not but uh, the salary is coming on the 20th. Today is the 30th. They have given us 14 days. And uh, the 14th today, the rapture is on the 26th of whatever. Please pay <laughs> so that me. Uh, <laughs> I think for you, I think clearly for you, you leave me elsewhere. <laughs> me, 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 I don't run. So anyhow, I, they should not be, oh, you know, you know that, you remember when my brother now was, uh, <laughs> yeah, now we know it's all over your mother. It's us. <laughs> because, because men again have become too, I think how to call it, we will get the words, but they don't want to, to be, everything they are on the go to do, to, to be okay. With the, the one, yeah, uh, so I said, you know, here, uh, and we have had, and we have had discussions, and uh, uh, you know, here yeah, is us now. And you know, she has, she has detested that I could pray and give a whole time. So, 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 so if, if, you, if, you, if you have seen, in some of these things, you have to be a little bit spiritual higher. That's it. So I said, now, now you are blessed, I need to talk Okay, so now what we do here? I don't know how we must pay. The thing is we must pay. There, there you must change a bit if you need your looks. For me, that's why, that's why some things change to me, boy. Some things change. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, but for me, anyway, I, I don't know. So, so anyway, they are, they are, they are now. We are free, and she paid, and we, 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 we
cause of the back of all this. I got that letter of demand. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the night and I went in a corner and told God, the thing I have learned in this journey, God does not disown his word. Never. And so I told God that you say it in Isaiah chapter 37, right? You know, you remember when I, Hezekiah was, was faced by a threat of war by Seneca. I said he went and spread the letter of threat before you in the temple. And he raised it and he came to you. There are four white come now. That is how you pray, my Lord. Prayer, let me tell you, prayer is not, is not a, a written code. No. But that's why I had a problem with Catholics. I had a problem with my dad. We, 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 had, we made amends before he passed on. And that also you need to know. Because you will not be here forever. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, that Paul told the Thessalonians, you remember when he was giving them an encouragement from what that did you remember? When in 18 he says, encourage each other with this, yeah? but in verse 17 if you hope, he says, and we who will be alive, where does he live now? Tell me which apartment or mansion it challenges me. Because Paul was interested in the Lord. At that stage, Paul knew it is possible that the Lord could find him alive. Because you remember, he says, and we who are still alive, we will join them in the world, in the sky. You remember? But, he's not that. Mm. Do you know, do you, do you remember, now I'm going to the world, do you remember? The guy who was raised from the dead in John chapter 11. You remember those others? Yes. Yeah. The only conqueror of the grave is Jesus. And so let me go back to track. I did not have I did not have could not have faith. Because after I got saved, I went and told him, I told them. You are worshiping adultery. And I was what? And they said, no, 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 who are you to speak to her that, that way? <laughs> it is not possible. Those are the people who are on the ship and calling on their gods. And their gods did not answer. And the man who had the right God was saved. And I told my God, I said, you see, that which you have prayed and brought me up to this level did not have the power to take away sin from me. I have, he, he told me, don't you ever go to repent to the priest and say, I have repented several times. But when I finish repenting on Sunday, on the Monday, I go again. He said, did you think of for confirmation? I said, I went there. But what happened? I said, but you go. Then I went with him. Then he went in the shop. He already went in the shop. And you know those things, fathers are well, well, even much older than us. But because now I ask, I ask myself, Mary and I, I with child, that time fathers were. Well. So ask you as a minister. So he asked him, was he was going with you, went with me, so he was buying things and asking, how much is this, how much is this? Then he asked the woman who was saying in there, he says, and how much is that? 
You go in the dark place. I knew that there was no power in his God. <laughs> Once you are God and detach you from this sin that battles men, you still have not arrived. You are still the sheep of that Jonah. You are calling a wrong God. Yeah. I fear to confront you on that. Yeah, you could have been, you could have just been away. <laughs> but he started seeing the truth. And he started telling me, talk to your, to your brothers. Talk to them. And my mother saw the truth a bit more. And took me on the side. And told me, pray for us. <laughs> they have since passed on. Because the time for passing on is there. I've told you Paul is nowhere. Yet he had said that probably they would be his I have told you that Nazareth is nowhere. Where does Abraham live? There is a time for everything. And as a praying father, you want a time when your children can bury you are not in And that is my and that is my prayer. You don't want to. There are people who have lived and they have noticed in their mouth and they still want to be there. You got it as a shame, the one. Because it comes a time I am yearning to distribute property to these children when I live. Every December. Chris, we take as a, the, the Lord has blessed us a lot. We go and, and take a holiday. Like now we, we are cooking things. And I have time to tell them these truths. And I am going to tell them this land is yours, Mary. If you get married, this land is the title for you. If you get married, the quack. And she chases you away. Come and do it. <laughs> Fast forward, then we had an extra two children. We had brother, and then we had Samuel. The son now. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. This, for me, I get amazed at how these children have, have coded these weeds. I was not a dance student at all. Not appear in any newspaper myself. No. <clears throat> These children are newspaper staff. And they would come and show me that now when I when we are going to Esther X with Ruha, how much her computer where she works, and she shows me things and how a little cry that little craft now changes the waves and she can't let so this she has got a hundred percent in the very exams. It has not happened in high university. They are asking themselves, who, who is this? And so and she takes me through the way and how a cow that is not a complicated person. But not if you know I said that is all over. You must you must stand. Uh, can I can I get a single point there? No. No, no. I must I cannot go to. Is <laughs> lost. I was I stumbled with contact in letters in my when I was doing the MBA, but I was running. I was you know they are compassionate people. Right? <laughs> so the person they are times like that. Anyway, so we got those two other children and I would wake up and hold them. I want to be drawn you to the brain for a reason. And I will wake up and they are still sleeping in the wee hours of three, four, five. Those are the times I like to pray. Except on Fridays, like tonight, I will be there in the midnight. If you can't be sure about that. So, so, so I will go about 3 a.m. Oh, Shandaka, Yanaba. So, 
and now they are sleeping. They are, they are very away. You know that sleep there is very good. And you hear me back holding their heads. <laughs> then, then you know she stands and she stands and I pray things and I communicate things and I, and I, and I declare the word. Then I go to the next bedroom. We, we, we from Gorobi, from that those tracks, we, we went into another one. Now, now we built. After we overcame those letters of royals. <laughs> <laughs> because, because the Lord came through. The Lord comes, no way. Oh yes. And so we built. And when we built, ah, me, I actually thought that I had a right. But we entered the house before it was even finished. Because you know you could not now, you can't manage to find. so we just entered ourselves to, to jump away from those letters. So when we were there, then, then, then we got the third and fourth child. And and we had the three bedroom in the house. So of course as we put the room together. And they started growing bigger, bigger. And uh, they started asking questions. I, I, I can't sleep. I, 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 need, I need space. I need space. <laughs> <laughs> I pray now for bigger things. I pray not because I, I, I am just a superman running. No, I pray because I was pushed to pray. <laughs> this is true. And I went deeper. They want, there are times when the Lord has come through. For me, when the Lord has come through to me, it has never been in a, an apparition of some sort. It, it is in scriptures. Scriptures. And those, the, the days that I can count them, my God, the Lord brings me scriptures. And when I open them, I recite them verbally. That's when I do I just start reading scriptures like this. And when he came to me one day, he was I was struggling now with the money was coming on, coming in, coming in, promotions were coming, 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 and areas paid, and, and I was dying with lust. And the spirit of lust was coming, but I was not really uh, into an relationship. relationship. No, 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 no. But I was. I was, I was, I would look at this old guy, and the guy would look good, and I would look there, and the Lord came to me in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. You have heard that it was said that whosoever looks at the woman, and the, 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 the woman has the dead of but I can tell you, whoever looks at the woman, has fled, has already made the dead with her in his heart. So, okay. And I went into fasting and prayer, you know that story. And I went 40 days and nights. And then, and then we had an issue again with my wife. And the Lord would bring me scriptures. The first scripture that he brought to me was from repentance. It is in Psalm 51. You know that, eh? Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your According to your great compassion, brought out my transgressions. Wash out all my liberty me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I seen that none what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Sure, I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Sure, I desired to see the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with high soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the power of crushing joys hide your face from my sins, brought out all my iniquity. So, thanks me up with it. And I think, and I, and I just, I just find myself, it can't be, it can't be man. And when I was finishing the 40th day, and when it went, he came to me and brought me some like the one. Don't hear other gods. People who tell you, who tell, who tell you that they have seen another revelation, they have been on top of the board. Those celebrations don't work. 
and I have tasted them. I have seen them and I see and I sat with them in those religions and, and, and I and I visited them and they saw one another and, and, and one day what what brought me up is I, I went with my dad again in, in this church and from there because they were, they were people who were of character or I mean of, of status and the, the, the father who was the leader came home to visit and came with two plates of beer and a coat. <laughs> but I was so broken for I was broken. And I and, 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 and looked at him. And he had removed the corner, he had removed the use of his castle. And I just had a big room. And I went to understand. This is the pastor of God. And he drank and he drank. He did not pray at all. My, my, my parents said, Will you bless the food? You are already in another sphere. <laughs> Will you bless the food? <laughs> I knew that there are no story except the one that is told of the Bible. And so I got the answer. So I started praying against those things. And I hit the mouth of, I started hitting the mouth of the family. Shirinji called me to pray for his house. He became very, very wealthy. And I went to pray for him. Yeah, he was she, he was, he was, he was, he was, he had big apartments. And I went there, and as I was praying for them, the Lord brought me a scripture. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 21. You know, you know, in there, he says, he says, he says, Woe unto you, Corazin. Woe unto you, you know, by society. You know those scriptures? 1121, isn't it? Of the book of Matthew. And if these miracles had been done to you, <laughs> to those to those people in, 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 the, in the other areas, like Sodom, they would have repented. And I told you I didn't hide things. I said, We have prayed this. The thing you will finish these apartments is, but they don't have something like this. Where, where, what does he say? Because they don't pray at all. What does the Lord say? I said, the Lord says that you need to be saved. Because his miracles are not yours. You are not here to stay forever, my friend. You do not stay here and go and live it here. No, is where we are going. So he told, I told him, it is, his miracles are not for that. And you don't hear pray the Lord. Except you started talking to me. Then another brother of mine went into witchcraft. You know now I had become a watchman because the Lord had told me, be a watchman. You remember in Ezekiel chapter 3? In Ezekiel chapter 3 he says, Go now, son of man, and be watchman. For if you do not tell them, they will die, but their blood will be. So I went to them. Said the Lord said, and at that time I was sick with big, big Bibles. Huh? The Lord is saying, repent. <laughs> Another guy now went, went into witchcraft, proper. And I told him, you will die. And I confronted him. And, he, and I went into school, they called Moses. Today, I don't believe these people here did. Oh. So, so he, he, he the Lord went, went to him. <laughs> I prayed and asked God to visit this man. And the Lord visited him. Mm. Yeah. Because unfortunately they are too zealous. But for the wrong. You remember the massive uh, Romans then? You know? You remember how Romans then opens? My desire. Because they are overzealous. But without the basis of knowledge. And so he became, woo! He came, he became saved. Praise the Lord. Another one who's older than me, now I was the watchman. I went, he, that guy, he has he has a lot of money, he's worth about maybe Kenya shillings like five hundred or so million, I think so. But of course, from this government shillings. <laughs> <laughs> and so me, you know me, they first looked at me and said, this fellow with this God is a dark one. When the Lord opened wealth, oh, I, I, I saw God lift me up. You, 
I actually thought that there is no way you can be rich without be, being fine. I had resolved. And my prayer to God was that, take me as I am, but I see you. I had reached that level. I said, because, because I want to see. Yeah, I want. I, 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 I cannot. So I had reached a stage. I said, for me, it looks like it was this thing of me. Fine. Fine. Take me. And the Lord came through. One day he gave me Matthew uh, Tadana Psalm 91. You know, there are some things, there are some things that when I recall, even when I am at my point of whatever point, those moments reflect to me and I say, wow. Ah, my he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Lord. I will say, of the Lord is my refuge. So I went to do up to verse 16. I read it, come from the heart. Okay. I and the Lord took me to another level. And I prayed for these children. And I prayed for my wife. And I and I detached my wife from company that was not built. I prayed, man of God, brother, they are prayers which when you are praying, your wife must not hear. <laughs> of course. Oh, yes. How? How can you go and, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 21, verse 1, the heart of the king is in God's hands. And he turns in like a water goes well. Because me, I will see, ah, I see now this heart of this woman is going somewhere. So I go and pull it. You say in Proverbs 21, 1, that the heart of the king. So I turn her. Imagine you are there turning her heart and she's there. How? Oh. <laughs> hey, hey. You have said in 36, 26 of the book of Ezekiel that I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So how can you confront her so that she has a heart of stone? You will, you will not eat that man. <laughs> therefore, therefore if, even when you are in that prayer and she surfaces, you must, you must chagar the bit. But Christians don't want to be, you must, you must be real. I turned that woman's heart like the water. I need it. Don't be, don't be physical with her because they, they, they will not eat. The house will be in heaven. Be spiritual with her. You are the spiritual authority as a man who must pray. So, so especially those moments where you know you, you are waking up to pray and for her, she's gone. That time. That is the time you wake up slowly and you put your hand there. <laughs> don't the word is governed by the spirit. Let me tell you, the word, the, the word of God says that there are Holy Spirit, and His worshippers must worship Him in the spirit. And in truth, John chapter four, verse twenty-four. You know that? Yeah. It is not possible to just say His worshippers must worship Him in the spirit and in truth. You must, because those are the kind of worshippers He's looking for. You must go. So, so, and and, and the spirit. Can I tell you it down the way that you can be safe and you move on and you have the baptism and you see you have reached, but you are still whole? Why? Because the spirit of God has not come into you. You need the spirit of God. Paul we raised that in John in the Acts of Apostles chapter 9. You know that? He was busy persecuting the church, the, the way the, 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 the people of God. You remember when he was on, he, on his way to Damascus and he had the authority of the chief priests. And he was arrested by Jesus. You remember now, some apostles chapter 9? And he says, Who are you, Lord? He said, It is me, Jesus, that you are. Now, rise up, and I will show you what you must do. And at that time, you remember, he had scared all his face. And he and he was sent him. Why? Because the Bible says that call to this my servant, because he is. My God. And so, zealousness without the spirit 
of God is dead, you will be on top of the boat. You are going on the boat, but the ship keeps sinking. <laughs> you do ask yourself, why did it be me? I, I don't know. Do, what is it? Do you know that we prayed for the boy child? I do not have it as an issue, by the way. How oh, until you remember the story very well. Until this guy comes to repair my refrigerator. It's a poor fellow. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and she sees Mary huh? and she sees uh, sister girl, huh? and she sees Rhoda. You know, you know we 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 were we were three girls at that. And this guy tells me, why do we open our stand up <laughs> And in Uganda it sounds terrible. <laughs> ah, so so for me let me tell you that is why he, Somebody must give you what they have. Somebody who doesn't have the Spirit of God, how can he give you the Spirit of God? How? They just, uh, uh, we had a mission, our, our church had a mission in Tanzania. My friend, it is this man. Me, I didn't know that Presbyterians are not spirit I, I don't know. I, I, there are some things I've learned in this walk of Christ. So this man, they call him. And you know, Tanzania, this is interesting. But do you know they had some a man in the house and he could not enter that because the devil had just <laughs> Oh yes. I think they are story or whatever. So demons took it over anyway to cut this to the whole the corners. So the mission was Tanzania. So so they first called the Presbyterian man. So he can't do it. Bible, they have those red big things. You know those, what do you call these separators? <laughs> so he opened, yeah, they already taken some fish and finger. That's why I asked myself, how do you see God on, on, on top of the stomach? How? You will, you must choose both. Either you can't be filled with hunger and again have the spirit of God. No. <laughs> nah. There is a, there is a choice. You must eat around moon, or you allow moon out at the spirit. That's it. That's it. Ah, I don't break it. So this guy had come and opened the book, opened the book. He says, Hey, Eric, what are you doing? Diamond, you say, Man, you're diamond, you come and you have a minute. Then he went and discussed it, and he still got it. So I said, Muripa, I'm going to so so when the mission happened in Tanzania, the man was in hospital. So for us, of course, it was no, 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 no. Our people were all empty. He decided to get a leader of fasting and prayer. Because, my friend, you also don't take it for granted. So, they chased away the demons. And you know, the Tanzanians say, How can I know as you are my name? How? Because they, because, because they were. <laughs> they don't know the distinction of being spirit filled and being a kind of religious guy. So, anyway, so now we will say, Simon, 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 you cannot, you know, in Acts of Apostles chapter 19, Paul asked them, you know, you know, he went and asked them, you people, when you receive, when you receive Christ, when you receive the salvation, what baptism did you receive? You remember that scripture? You, you remember it? Let's go there. In, in Acts of Apostles chapter 19. Oh, because the praying father must be filled by for me, I don't know any other way. Maybe you, you know. But if whoever is there, you can open and, uh, and tell me. But it is in Acts of Apostles chapter 19. Huh? He says, and Paul asked him, I need that scripture for you. It, it is from, it will be from verse, 
Are you there, Nanti? Huh? Very good. Paul is in Ephesus. Yes. So, Acts 19 and verse 3. Uh -huh. One verse 3. So, Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming of him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So, so you see, you, you, you must get that spirit. And only he who has it can give it. Let me tell you, and I, and I want to come that, because the power of the praying Father lies in the spirit of truth. You must settle and, and yearn and get the spirit of truth. That is my ask. These other things can come and follow him. Whoever, whoever prospers, please, whoever gathers some property must plant security. Oh, yes. I have never seen a watchman on a toilet. <laughs> I don't see the baby. No. But when they bark, they will be there. Because there's a church. No, yes. I actually, I actually, you know, you know, we know our Lord Jesus says, I am the gate in John chapter 10, verse 7 and verse 9. He says, I am the gate. And he meets in verse 9 and says, I am the gate. And he says, he says, the thief comes to steal here and he says, I have come that they may have. Right? So 10, 10, 9, 10, 9 now. He says, I am the gate. From verse 7, he says, I am the gate. Because you need that gate. Because you have got a treasure. You will have the treasure. My friend, when I started getting some money, I know, I knew that in Psalm 127, from verse 1 and 2, he says, whoever, if the Lord doesn't build the house, build us. If he doesn't keep watch, the watchman. But there must be watchmen. So I put the watchman. So I put the gate. So I put the doors. So some others, of course, some others put it. Even I also have uh, one of these security rights. Some others put security rights that are sensitive. You come and because they are guarding something there. Others, some, I was attending to see very well that there was a man from Nigeria. He says, at the gate of the Gabbatan Bayafra, whatever, they, they had revealed the snakes. So you come and you say, beware of the snakes. <laughs> hey, because before you come, you must know that there you just walk. And I am tired of men who can't stand to protect their families. No way. You must stand in the gap. I have seen men, and this is the last one. I have seen men, men who the dogs are barking outside that have them. And they bark the second time and bark the third time and it's slowly. <laughs> I, am, I don't want my dogs. That's why I think I just die. I, I will die probably also. Because I can't, because in this sexual life, it, it's a way to keep safe. You must keep safe. But me, I put on my gun, I go out. What's that? But a man, if a man go in, when they back again, or if it's even in the neighborhood and there's the current there, he goes under, under the bed. Mama, Mama, she was ready. And me, I keep, I stay there being married to you. <laughs> and it, it also happens in the spirit. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 8, he says, Those of you who are cowards, don't go to war with that. And it is clear, it is okay. Let them stay home. They will still be blessed, but, but then they will not be others. It, it, it is scripture. Read them. You 
Glory be to the verse 8. My children know me. They hear this voice in the house. They hear it before God. They hear it. The Lord that told me, and then you wake up. Sometimes, of course, she loves the Lord. They are trying to see her. She loves the Lord. She, she, she wants to be. There is a time I was there in prayer and, and she held my shoulders. Oh. Because you must be the governor of the whole. You, you the brave father, must be the watchman. You must be there. If it happens that you go away, go away. Where is Paul? Where is Moses? Where are they? Go. Let the children bury them. <laughs> Why do you want to bury them? Yeah, but to wake up and be the man, and be the man that prays and also shows it by action. I was amazed at the story in Kampala where a man. Would, go, would wake up at 9 a.m. The wife would have gone quickly to work and she would have taken the children and the man would have slept and under that boat completely and the landlord uh, the landlord came. I said, Mother Mami, let me see that landlord that will happen since you used to come and get Heaven, the Father, me, I'm a man of prayer, so I have to pray. I don't know how you want to do this. I don't know. But, but you need to pray. Do you want it to be with that now or do you want to do someone else? Would you? Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, I have seen you manifest as the praying Father to me. I have seen you cover me with your blood. I have seen you manifest to me by your spirit of truth. I have seen you move me from levels of hunger to millions, to hundreds of millions, I have seen it. I have seen you build mansions to me. I have seen you cover me in excellence and abundance. I have also seen you, oh, and listen to this now. The Lord told me in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 29, He told me that however, whatever you have now, leave us to you to God. Don't hang up on the things of this world. Please, that is my concluding remark. So I have seen you love showing me that I don't hold on to the things of the world. Because I must come to you when I am light and I have moved this family, the lineage you have given me set up in this world to the level where they also see you and worship you. To the level where they will come and manifest in your truth. The truth which you have manifested to me that I should know. I have seen you, my God, when you brought to me scripture in Psalm 69, when I was going through a tribulation condition. Maybe one person here has such a, a, a condition. And you told me, oh, my God, you showed me the scripture. And I have seen hate in poverty. Thank you, my God, said me, oh God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the mire and depth where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters, the floods and covered me. I am worn out calling for help, my throat is bad. My eyes stay looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason, outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy me. I am forced to restore while I cannot steal. You know my folly, oh God, my guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me, O oh Lord, the Lord Almighty. May those who seek you not be put shame because of me, O oh God of Israel. For I am your son for your sake, and shame covers my face. I must change you unto my brother, and annihilate my old mother's sons. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you follow me. When I weep and fast, I must send you scorn. When I put on sacrifice, people make sport of me. Those who see that they get mock me, and I'm the song of the prophets. But I pray to you all, oh, in the time of your favor, in your great love, oh God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire, do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or the deep torrent of me, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, all, oh, out of the goodness of your love. In your goodness, oh love, come here and rescue me. Redeem me, oh God, from the outcome of Will you kindly come and show your way? Truth and life that you told us in 16 
of the book of John for him. I thank you and I hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed? Let's be in that mood of prayer. And uh, as our eyes are closed, and you receive the challenge as a father, as a man. And I want you to respond to the word of God. And perhaps you hear me say, I want to be a praying father. I'm not praying as I should. I'm not going to watch my, for my family as I should. And from tonight, I want it to be a turning point for me. It may start small, but it will grow. Let there be that desire in your heart that you need to be counted as a prayer, as a prayer father. Stand up on your feet then, as you respond to God's word. That you want to be there for your family. What my brother is telling you is practically true. He has prayed literally everything in his life. When he says he has moved into millions, it's not a story, it's the truth. He's a successful businessman because he prays. He is wealthy in terms of shillings and cents. He has it, not because he's told, because he prayed. Amen. Because he connected with the saucer. He's told you the story of his children. Brilliant. He told me the story of his daughter, how she went to the UK. She's been aeronautical engineering in the UK and she's stopping the class. That can only be God. Amen. He hates a huge institution because he has connected with brethren. There is a genuine way of doing things. Amen. And there is a way things can be done the right way. Amen. If you know how to connect to the source. Connect to God. Amen? Amen. Brother Boyd, why don't you come and lead us in prayer? Pray for this man. And pray for us. Before I pray, I want to admonish all of us. I want you to look at the man next to you and tell them it's possible to be a man of prayer. It's not a perfect thing that uh, you cannot do. Just affirm them and tell them you can do it. I want to tell you what the Bible says in the book of Romans. The Bible says the Holy Spirit. And I like what it says. Because let me tell you something. You know, sometimes we, we hear some of these things and we think, you know, the Holy Spirit is a spooky thing. Let me tell you, as a man, you will not be able to build a prayer life by your effort alone. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so as we pray, I just want you to personally, this is not about being macho here. I want you to personally tell God to infuse you with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can back the desire for prayer in you. I'll tell you the truth. You may sit here and think you can mechanize this thing. This thing cannot be mechanized. It can only be birthed by the Spirit of God in a man. Let me tell you something. The first thing God did when he created man, the Bible says before he gave him anything, he gave him his breath. And I want you to believe that God can put, and the breath of God is the Spirit of God. But God will infuse you with the Spirit so that you don't have to mechanize prayer. But prayer can be a delight that springs from, from your soul within. Are you ready to make that kind of sincere, genuine petition before God? Come on, I want you to just be on your feet and lift up your two hands before God and say, Holy Spirit of God. Come on, say, Holy Spirit of God, I need your help. I cannot pray without you helping me. And so in the name of Jesus today, I want to ask by faith, because the Holy Spirit is not received any other way. The Holy Spirit is received by faith. Lord, by faith I reach out to you. I remove every obstacle of sin between me and you by faith. By the blood of Jesus. Come on, say, by the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody say, by the blood of Jesus. I connect with you, Father.
because it is only the blood of Jesus that can give me access to your throne of grace. And I reach out to you, mighty God. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to, re to imbue me with your spirit. I want to receive the Holy Spirit today. I want to receive the Spirit of God that will empower my prayer life. That will empower my prayer life. That will empower me to pray as a man in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and say with me, Lord Jesus, the same spirit that raised you from the dead can raise up my dead prayer life. Everything that has not been desiring to pray in me, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is able to raise up a person in me for prayer. So in the name of Jesus, Come on, say in the name of Jesus. Come on, say with me boldly in the name of Jesus. I resist every laziness in prayer. I resist every passive spirit in prayer. I resist every apathy in prayer. Because now I am not praying by my own strength. I am praying by the enablement of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to just say one more thing before I pass this mic away. I want you to pray that God, the, the same way God, and these are the words that I'm sharing in my spirit, the same way God put his breath in Adam, God wants every man to have that breath in him. Because if you have no that breath in you, you have no life, you have no chance against the unseen forces that contend with you as a man. Let me tell you something, the battle for your masculinity is not just about the physical things that you think it's about. There are forces that are militating against you and you cannot conquer those forces if you don't have the deposit of the breath of God in you. And so come on, lift up your right hand and say with me, Dear Lord Jesus, I need you to breathe on me, Lord. I need you to breathe on me by your spirit. I need you to breathe on me by your power. In my chest, I need your breath. In my heart, I need your strength. In the name of Jesus, you are my Father, oh God. May you breathe on me your breath. May you breathe on me your breath. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know the Bible says when Jesus was ascending and going to heaven, you know what he did on his disciples? The Bible says he breathed on them. He imparted his spirit on them. Because he knew this man cannot survive this world without the breath that has carried me through as a man. And Jesus was a man, but he needed the breath of God. So come on in one more minute, don't get tired. Let me tell you something, this thing is something that you've got to develop a desperation for. It does not come by being passive. You must develop a desperation for it. David says, as a deer pants for the water, my soul longs for you. Your soul must long for something. Your soul must long for something more than money. I'm telling you, man, your soul must long for something more than sex. Your soul must long for God because that is where your strength lies. So in the name of Jesus, lift up your right hand again and say in the name of Jesus, I want to pant after you, O oh God. I want to have a hunger in my heart for you, O oh God. I want you to stir me up, O oh God, until I can no longer lie down, until I seek your face. Because your spirit in me empowers me to be a man of prayer. To be a man of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to tell you one thing that I want you to go and do when you get home. The Bible says Jesus spoke and he said, The words that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. You will not be a man of power in prayer if you are lazy in the word. The same way you check your phone daily, what would happen in your life as a man? 
if you opened the word of God and drank the spirit in that word, what would happen in your life if you decided, I am not going to just be fasting for natural things. I will be fasting for the spirit in God's word. So I want you to make one more prayer. Because the word of God carries the spirit of God that stirs up the spirit of prayer. The word of God carries the spirit of God that stirs up the spirit of prayer. So I want you to lift up your right hand one more time and say, Lord, I am lifting my hand up because I am dedicating myself today that I am going to be a man of the word because the word carries the spirit that I need in the name of Jesus. I pray that I will be diligent in the word. I pray that I will be committed to the word. Because the word is what will stop me up to pray. Now I want to promise you something. When you become a man who loves God's word, your spirit will be so stirred, you will feel funny when you haven't prayed. There's a level you get to as a man, you don't pray out of duty. I don't want you to live here saying we've been given duties to do. No. I want you to live here knowing that this thing can actually become a delight. Not a duty, a delight. Something that just flows out of you. But let me tell you something. You will not achieve that if you are divorced from God's word. You must be married to God's word. Look at the man next to you and tell them, you must be married to God's word. Because the word of God is your strength as a man. The word of God is what defines the spirituality in you. And so in the name of Jesus, come on, I want you to lay the hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your brother and say, Lord, I am laying my hand on my brother. And we are agreeing according to God's word. Because the word says, whatever we agree on earth, is agreed even in the heaven. And we are declaring that we will be men of the word. We will be men of prayer, and we will be men of the word. We will be men of prayer, and we will be men of the word. In the name of Jesus. The power that was there in the book of Acts was only there because the men prayed, and they were in the word. And at some point they were being distracted, but they said, you know what? We have discovered the enemy was to distract us. And I want to tell you as a man, the moment you commit to this, the enemy will try to distract you. But take it from me, you must fight for your focus on those two things. If you will lose everything else, don't lose your focus on prayer and don't lose your focus on the word. So just pray for your brother one more prayer. And say in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hand on my brother, I am connecting with him as a point of contact. And I believe for myself and for my brother that the word of God and the lifestyle of prayer will define me from today. Even when I feel low, I will pick myself up because now I have the deposit of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the promise of the Father the very promise of the Holy Spirit. I receive that promise in the name of Jesus. I want to say one last thing. You cannot receive the gift of the Holy Spirit if Jesus doesn't have your heart. If we, if we don't tell you that part, we are telling you half truth. And the half truth is a whole lie. If you do not have Jesus in your heart, if you've not invited Christ to be Lord over your life, you cannot walk in what we are talking about. So I want to give an invitation to a man here who is saying, I don't want to live a life of assumptions and frustrations. I want to be clear that I have a solid walk with God as a man and I have connected with Jesus Christ and what he did for me on the cross. Is there any man in here who is saying, you know what? I want to leave this place having connected with my father so that I can have a deposit of his breath in my life. I want to receive Jesus as the Lord of my life. Let me tell you something. This is not about religion. This is about your life as a man and your destiny as a man. If you do not receive Jesus, 
your destiny is unsure. As a matter of fact, you have no destiny if you have no Christ in you. Is there a man who is saying it here? I want to receive Jesus. I don't want to live out of a meeting here and say I had nice things and nice stories. I want to live here empowered because I have a relationship with God that is authenticated by my commitment to the cross of Jesus Christ. Is there any man in here who is saying, I want to receive Jesus? I want to receive Jesus. Turn to the man next to you and ask them, have you received Jesus in your life? This is the time we get radical here. Because we are not playing games here. You must have a relationship with God. And if you don't, it will not be because we, don't, we didn't tell you. We want to be bold to tell you, if you do not receive Christ, everything we are saying is in vain. It begins at the cross yes. of Jesus Christ. That is the intersection between the crisis of man and the opportunities that God has for that man. Is there any man here who is saying, I want to receive Jesus as the Lord of my life? Any man? Any man? I want to keep this microphone away, but I don't want to lock you out. I want to give you this awesome privilege to open up your heart. And allow Christ to deposit his spirit in you. Is there any man? There is none. I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to give this microphone away. Father, we came as men in your presence, O oh God. We read in the scriptures where you invited men alone. To not come with their wives. To not come with their children. But to come alone in your presence. For a time of interface with you, Lord. We have appeared before Zion. Lord, we know that we are not living the same way we came. We are living empowered. We are living transformed. We are living changed. We are living liberated. And we are living empowered to live lives that bring with purpose and manifest the glory of God in our generation. In Jesus' name, we so decree these things and command them to be so now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you. You have the seats. Wow. Have you enjoyed those three days? Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. This car brings us to the end of our, of our conference. And I just want to make just a few announcements that we may, we may be able to close. Uh, yesterday I shared with you about uh, the season 12 that is coming up in January. And uh, for those who are keen in joining us in January, for the season 12 program i'd like you as you walk out pick up a registration form there take five minutes and fill it up and then we may go those